Hello， 你好，欢迎回来。Welcome back to Throwback Thursday. I almost said Wisdom Wednesday. Yeah, ah,、uh, Throwback Thursday with Johnny Tiger. This is obviously makeup episode for our missing Wisdom Wednesday. Um, today's date is July twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. Ah, kitten is taking a nap. So, ah,、uh, we are. On our own,、uh, and yes, hopefully, hopefully, I'm fully intending that later tonight there should be a Toys Thursday, as well. Although lately we've been so busy,、um, and it's it just really unpredictable when we can get a video out.、Uh, I will、uh, first apologize that、uh, the schedule is a little bit wonky. Uh, hopefully, it will stabilize in another week or so, and we'll go back to more or less、uh, more regular schedule. Who knows? We'll try our best.、Uh, I mean, you guys have over a thousand videos on this channel to enjoy. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? I I think if there is a award, if if there's a, like a, a world record for the one single channel. Hosted by a totally blind person who generates the most content, who who have the most content, I may、uh, very well qualify to be on there.、Uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe some of you can、uh, nominate me for the Guinness World、uh, Book of Record or something like that. <laughs>、um, anyway,、um, today we are going to take. A、uh, shallow dive, not deep dive, because deep dive would take way too long. We're going to take a shallow dive into some interesting family politic in Chinese culture. Now,、uh, most of these are no longer the case today, but they were、uh, definitely relevant not that long ago.、Uh, I mean, we're talking about. The end of the Chinese imperialism was around 1912,、uh, but even then,、uh, for a good 10, 20, 30 years after that,、uh, Chinese people still held on to these beliefs. Heck, there were even people from、uh, 1950, 1960. Some big families, old old families, still hold on to these beliefs because you got to remember that. While to a lot of us、uh, who are born today, these cultures and customs may seem really crazy, but to families that can trace their roots back to the Ming Dynasty or even the Tang Dynasty, and yes, there are families that can trace them、uh, themselves back that old in Taiwan and in China. To family like that,、uh, it, it is almost sacred to hold on. Uh, to believe such as the kind of、uh, thing we're talking about today, which is、uh, family relationship, family drama, family politic, and、uh, each person have a different position in life based on how they stand in the family itself. Now、uh, we have mentioned some of these. Before in the past episode,、uh, family is called 家人 in Mandarin. 家人 my family. 我的家人啊，家、uh, J I A means home. 啊、uh, ，人 R E N means people. So family literally means my homies, my home people. Give me one second. The camera is a bit wonky. Now, when we talk about family, quite often we need to talk about the、uh, bloodline. And in Mandarin, bloodline is called 血统血统啊血 means uh, blood. Uh, that's like S H E A. Or S H U A actually, Xie, a tone, a T O N G means united, 
uh, uh, origin, uh, uh, foundation. Uh, so Xie Tong means uh, your bloodline. Uh, family and home life can also be said using the word Jia Ting. Jia Ting. Jia uh, again means home. Ting means a place. So home place. Jia Ting. Uh, usually you can be said uh, using uh, like your family. So in Mandarin, if we are talking about my family, like uh, if I'm more talking about the family unit or the family home or the family property that I may say my jia ting. Uh, jia ren uh, means the members of the family, family members. Uh, when you're talking about people, and you will say jia ren. Family value in Mandarin is jia ting guan Nian. Guan Nian uh, means value, uh, tradition. That's G U A N N I A N. Guan Nian. So, and then you just add Jia Ting family, family place, uh, home place. So, Jia uh, Ting Guan Nian means family value in Mandarin. This is a, a, a phrase or a combination of words that you will hear quite often. When you talk to Chinese people, especially around families and traditions and values and how they educate their children and all that stuff. Incidentally, although not quite related uh, to our topic today, if you want to say your home country, you want to say my, my country, my home country, you will say 国家 in Mandarin. 国家, uh, that's country. 国, technically mean nation or country. 家, again, means home. So uh, this emphasizes uh, on country should be your home. And your country is just a larger version of your home. Uh, a very famous Chinese say uh, during the war time, when people talk about, I just want to take care of my home. I just want to take care of my job. And a lot of people trying to uh, instill that patriotism in you, they will say, 没有国,哪有家? So, 国家,国家,没有国,哪有家? Means, uh, you keep talking about home. But if without a country, how are you going to get a home? Uh, so, that is a, a common say during the war time uh, for Chinese people. Now, like I said, that was uh, uh, not quite related. Today, uh, we are going to talk about family politic, uh, something that always been very interesting, but quite uh, uh, out of the ordinary topic. A lot of people uh, know some of these, but uh, not the extent of how much politic you can, that can exist in a Chinese family. And even though, like I said, some of these politics are no longer uh, valued today, uh, there are a lot of undercurrent in the Chinese family uh, that can be quite crazy, even in 2023. And a lot of those were uh, an extension of these old values. For instance, most of you have heard that in Chinese culture, having more than one wife was perfectly okay. It's expected. A lot of men, especially rich men, uh, would have three or four wives. Uh, and even some of the men that were poor, uh, as long as they could afford it, or as long as they could find uh, families that were willing to uh, give uh, to sell them their daughter, uh, some poor people still manage to have three or four wives. Even today, in today's uh, day and age, even though it's highly discouraged and it's not legal, there are still, like if you look at most of those super rich Chinese people, like the, the millionaires, the billionaires, a lot of them still have 
three or four wife, and some of them even have it approved by law because use they they use the excuse that they need that many wives to foster enough children to help them with their uh their their, their assets to manage their organizations and companies and all that stuff. Uh, so traditionally, Chinese people's value has always been on creating offspring. I mean, this is kind of why Chinese people uh, manage to overpopulate the world all on their own, even though they have faced so much war, so much devastation, but they still manage to overpopulate the world. It's because in China, uh, in Chinese culture, we put a massive emphasis uh, on producing offspring. Everything, yes, every purpose was on producing offspring to procreate. Uh, in fact, in Chinese culture, uh, it has always been that if you are not able to foster a child, if you're not able to produce a child, it's a biggest taboo, it's the biggest sin. Like, it's way worse than murder, way worse than cheating, way worse than stealing, way worse than rape, way worse than uh, greed. Like, the, the, I mean, those things are bad, but you're not able to continue your bloodline has always traditionally been, been the worst offense possible. Uh, throughout Chinese history, the uh, and the, 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 the fact that someone was unable to have children was often the ground for divorce, uh, for uh, being ostracized by their community, being uh, disowned by the family, or even outright being murdered uh, in many cases. So uh, this is why uh, even today, a lot of Chinese people, I have uh, best friend who's Chinese and he is in his 40s and his wife and him they're just panicking because they don't have children and uh, because he is the eldest son in the family in, in his uh, family so he is honor bound obligated to pass on the bloodline and, and he is just like totally panicking because it's not happening uh, so yeah it, it is a really really big deal in Chinese culture uh, to procreate, to pass on that, uh, that, that bloodline. We'll probably talk about this a little bit uh, later and also again and again in the future because it does come out uh, quite consistently in Chinese culture, this whole fear of not being able to meet the uh, expectation of reproducing. Uh, so yeah, it, it's something that's going to keep coming up. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind is a lot of time when we hear about Chinese men uh, wanting three or four wives or more wives, uh, we from the modern society, modern uh, values, we tend to judge those men, or oh, they must be horny bastard. They must do that because they are disloyal to their wife. They, they do that because they, they, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, and, and they just want to uh, uh, have sex with different people. I mean, a lot of, yeah, there are some that was that, but honestly, a lot of these men, if, they, if that's all they wanted, and they didn't need to marry these women. There were tons of women that would take their money and have sex with them. They didn't need this. A lot of the time when men uh, would have three or four wives, uh, more more than one wife in Chinese culture was strictly, strictly uh, to fulfill that expectation from uh, uh, culture, from society, from his family, is to procreate, to have as many children as humanly possible, because remember, back, especially thousands of years ago, the survival rate of babies were very, very low. So if you uh, just have one wife, that's okay. Let's say you ha you have sex, and then nine months later, the baby is born, and then the baby is uh, something happened to the baby. 
now you try again. You got to wait another nine months, and then maybe something happen. Uh, so it it can be very detrimental to your bloodline if you only have one wife. However, if you have let's say four wife, then you have sex with four of them. Then let's say all four of them get become pregnant around the same time. Then you have suddenly four times the chance. Uh, to get a healthy baby out of that.、Uh, now this does I I I do understand this make women sound like just baby making machine. It just make、uh, it sound like it's all about making babies. But when you really think about it, in the animal kingdom, that how a lot of the time it is. It's all about making baby.、Uh, male bears don't stay around. Female bear after the baby is born,、uh, male bear is just there to 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 give to make the baby.、Uh, male tiger don't stick around after the tiger the young cub is born. Again, you know, so I'm not saying that it's right.、Uh, after all, we are supposed to be more civilized, but、uh, it's not not like evil or totally wrong either because that. It has been、uh, the culture that that was the culture. Yes, the whole culture、uh, built around producing as many offspring as possible. So、uh, I often say that the time is now four p.m.、Uh, thank you.、Uh, I often say that when you want to be acceptance of others' culture, then you can't just pick and choose.、Uh, you just pick. You, you just. Like the silk, the china, the beautiful sword, the beautiful armor, and then you diss all the stuff that you don't agree with. Oh, it's a, it's a dehumanizing. It's a making women just baby, making factory. No, it, the culture, like everything else, have good and bad. Every culture is like that. So you, you if you want to be accepting, and be open minded about it, then you got to understand that these things that. Uh, having more than one wife,、uh, making a lot of babies, to us it sounds like wrong. It sounds wrong. It sounds shallow. But back then it totally was that that way for a reason, for a very good reason,、uh, because this is how China was able to survive for five thousand years. Is that? Whenever there's a war, whenever there's battle to be fought, whenever there's work to be done, we were able to mobilize hundreds of millions of people, no problem, because we have a lot of people.、Uh, so this system、uh, was there for a play, for a reason, was in place for a reason. I digress. Let's go back to talking about、uh, men that have more than one wife, shall we? Now, even though、uh, it's common knowledge that men in China were traditionally、uh, expected to have more than one wife,、uh, a lot of us don't realize that not all wives were made equal. And I'm not even talking about mistresses and uh, uh, bedmaid. Uh, what are bedmaid? Well, they're just like housemaid, but their duty include sleeping with the master. Yeah, I'm. I'm not even talking about like. Raping your slave or forcing them to do that? No, these maids, when they became the maid, it was in their contract to be bed maid.、Uh, you know, it, it was in their job description. Again, not to say that it was right or wrong, but they knew what they were getting into.、Uh, so mistresses,、uh, side twist, and、uh, bed maid. These I'm not even talking about these.、Uh, just strictly speaking, the wives themselves had、uh, different authorities.、Uh, there has always been on, only one legal wife. Okay, so even though they say men were allowed to have four wives, eight wives, twelve wives, twenty-four wives, whatever,、uh, only one of them would be the alpha. That was the alpha female. That was the legal. Wife, the first wife, the eldest,、uh, the one in charge,、uh, the 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 official wife.、Right? That there can be only one,、uh, and then the rest would be 
the I guess uh, it would not nice to call them、uh, lower level or insignificant wise, but you know what I mean. The the rest of them would be betas. There can be only one alpha, and then all the rest of them would be betas.、Um, so this was usually distinguished,、uh, even in the Chinese language. The legal wife is called qi. Okay, we are we still use this word today when we say our wife. Uh, when you would say my wife, we say 我的妻子妻子 So qi, uh, same tone as number seven. The word for number seven, qi, uh, that. So, uh, qi is a word for the alpha wife, the legal wife, the 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 uh the the number one wife number one. Uh, the rest are called qi. Uh, C H U A, Chi. Uh, so Chi and Chi are very different. A lot of times people get it mixed up. People just say Chi 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 Chi. A lot of people will say Chi Chi Chen Chun means a lot of wives, but that is wrong because there can only be one Chi. Okay, there is only one Chi. Uh, Chi is your legal wife. Chi is wife number one. Chi is the alpha female. Uh, chi, you can have as many chi as you can afford, uh, but but and this is where the、uh, power of the chi comes in. Okay, uh, whenever a man wanted a chi, the chi have to agree. Right, if the chi doesn't agree, then it it can't happen. Right, the, the man can't bring a chi home. Uh, so the chi has the Authority to decide if and if if you come home and hey I I saw this I've been talking to this、uh, cute girl and I want to、uh, bring her home and be my chi. You said okay. You you have to talk to your chi about that, and your chi have to meet this woman and see if she is going to benefit the household. Does she have good hips? Does she look like she can do heavy work? Uh, what kind of quality does she have? Is she obedient? Does she know how to cook? Does she know how to stitch and sew? Does she know how to do farm work? So your chi have to interview this chi, uh, uh, to before agreeing or disagreeing. Uh, now, this is not to say that some men wouldn't go out of their way to bully their chi, their、uh, first wife, into agreeing to a chi, but. It's difficult.、Uh, the chi has a lot of power in the marriage. If you are not careful, the chi can literally take everything you own, even back then. Okay, even you, a lot of people say that women didn't have a lot of power. That's not strictly true.、Uh, when you are the first wife, the legal wife, the elder wife, you have so much power in that family.、Uh, and if you come from a, a powerful family. Yourself, then that make it even more so.、Uh, so a lot of time, men are very very fearful and respectful toward their chi.、Uh, now toward their chi is a completely different matter because chi is like a whole different league than chi.、Uh, nowhere as as much authority as chi.、Um, Chi would only also be the only one that get a full wedding.、Uh, when a man takes wife in Chinese history, only the chi would get a full wedding treatment, like the family exchanging gift and family both、uh, sign papers and and and、uh, do ceremonies and and all the family friends show up and stuff like that.、Uh, only the chi would get that treatment. Chi. Uh, do not get that treatment. For the most part, chi would the only thing the chi would get is、uh, the man who's、uh, getting the chi would send a horse and buggy or send、uh, transportation over、uh, to the chi's household and then bring the woman into the family. That would be like a small banquet, but it's limited to. Close family friends and people who are in the family, and so they keep it pretty hush hush,、uh, and then that's it. You you don't get a big ceremony. You don't get 
uh, uh, to uh, enjoy the whole benefit uh, of a full wedding, even as a chi. Uh, what's even worse is a chi. You can only get rid of a chi by uh, a legal divorce, and that is hard to come by, even in the old days. Like when people talk about、uh, men ditching their chi, ditching their wife. Usually, it's just ditching the mistresses or the chair. You want to ditch your legal wife, your alpha wife, is very difficult.、Uh, the magistrate have to sign up for it. They have to sign it, sign it, and, and the the uh, original uh, person who brought you together, the matchmaker, have to also sign it. So you take multiple signatures to get a official divorce. Uh, this is why、uh, some people resorted to killing their wife because it's just too hard to get rid of them. Otherwise,、uh, again, and not, not that's not nice, not right.、Uh, but it's how it it illustrates how difficult it was for a man to legally ditch his chi. However, for chi, it's Different. Chie did not enjoy this kind of legal protection, because most of the time a chie is just bought. You 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 just, you know, you you、uh, buy her, you bring her into the family,、uh, and you marry her, and she become your chie. So if you can be bought, you can be sold. So traditionally, a lot of chie will get sold、uh, again and again.、Uh, Especially if the husband, the master of the house, passes away, then the chi, the alpha female,、uh, quite often will either sell off the chi,、uh, the other wife. The, the chi has the right to sell off chi,、uh, or the chi will sometimes either、uh, just kick them out of the family,、uh, shoo them. Away, tell them to go away with nothing but the cloth on their back, or the chi will even force them to commit suicide.、Um, yeah, the life of a chi,、uh, second wife, third wife,、uh, fourth wife, was very, very bad in Chinese history.、Um, a lot of, a lot of time, to be a chi is just like barely, barely better than a bed maid.、Uh, you can. You can still order the maids and servant around. You can still、uh, enjoy a lot of perks of being married to the master of the house, but、uh, the chi will always outrank you, and you you better not piss off、uh, the alpha female, the alpha wife, because she can do a lot of things to you, and the master of the house has no way to protect you, because the、uh, organization, the politics of the house itself. Uh, was mostly controlled by the chi.、Uh, we talked about this in a couple of episodes ago when、uh, we when I mentioned that、uh, while the king, the emperor, had all the right in directing war and finance within his own inner chamber in his own bedroom, he has very little power. It's a queen that rule the inner circle. So、uh, if you if you are a chi. Then that chi is the queen,、uh, and you are the the chi are at best the concubines.、Uh, so, they're they're even though they're all wives, they are they do not share the same level of、uh, power, and this unfortunately also lead to many many of the chi, many of the new wives, do their best to try to murder or get rid of the first wife because then. If they can get rid of the first wife, then there's a chance for them to now become the chi. They can uh, uh, transcend their own station and become chi, and now they can enjoy bullying and bossing the other wives around. And if you are wondering, so what's wrong with these women? Why would they want to be someone's chi? Why don't they just? Marry someone who is like marry some single guy and become his chi to begin with. Why? Why do they want to be someone's chi? A lot of time they 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 don't have a choice. A lot of time these chi do not have a choice. They are sold 
a servant that they, they got sold uh, by somebody, sometimes their own parents, uh, into slavery, into uh, servantry. And becoming a chi is much better than becoming a servant. So a lot of them, because if you become a chi, at least if you can find a way to get rid of the chi, or if the chi died, then there's a chance for you to become the chi. There's a chance for you to become the alpha. But if you are a servant, you'll always be a servant. You you won't be able to get out of that. So a lot of women will choose that instead, especially the beautiful ones, the one that know that they can uh, uh, compete in that playground, uh, in the bedroom. Uh, also, a lot of people uh, that become widows uh, or no longer virgin, they, especially in the old days, they lost the right to be someone's chi. They can no longer, like, you know, uh, they, they, they were no longer clean. They were no longer pure. They, they were, uh, 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 they, they were uh, around the block a few times. Uh, so in, in, in these cases, be someone's chi was the best they can hope for. There, there's no way for them to be someone's chi because um, people back then placed such a big value on uh, having to stay pure until your your wedding. So if you were unfortunately raped or widowed uh, or something like that, and uh, you, you get married again, then the best you can hope for is to be someone's chi. Now, so some people are wondering, okay, so you say that it was up to the chi if it's okay to get a chi. Uh, you, when you want a second wife, you got to ask your first wife if, if it's okay. Okay, so why would they say yes? What's wrong with them? Like, you, you ask most women nowadays, are you okay if your husband bring home another woman? Hell no. Hey, most women today don't say, hey, uh, hell no. Are you, are you kidding me? Uh, but back then, it's different, right? Uh, here are a few reasons why a chi would not only say yes, but a lot of them actively went out of their way to look for a chi for their husband. Number one, of course, is uh, for procreation reason. As we mentioned, uh, being not able to have enough children uh, or a male child was a big sin in Chinese culture. So most of the time, a chi is about the same age as a husband uh, because a chi and the husband usually are arranged to be married when they are like only 10 or 11 years old. So maybe the husband would be 10, and the chi would be eight and then they are in the arranged marriage and they, they get married when the husband is 14 and the, the chi is now uh, 12 uh, something like that yeah people got got started really early back then okay so let's say you you are married and like 30 years later now your husband is let's say 40 and you you yourself 38 back then that's considered really old like back then, if you were 30, you were old. But if you were in your 40s, you are like golden age. You're, you're, you're on your way out. Uh, but for some reason, for all these years, you're unable to produce a child or undo, unable to produce a male child as you end up with a whole bunch of daughters. Well, then this is when the chi will, in many cases, just tell the husband, will you please go and bring home a chi so we can take some pressure off of me. Because when it's just me producing baby, it's really harsh. Like whenever I, I my baby don't make it, or if I produce a female, then your whole family get mad at me. Can you please go and bring home someone else? Uh, so procreation is one big reason of uh, why a chi may encourage uh, the, the uh, bringing home of chi 
or more than one chair even. Because sometimes you bring home a chair and then that for some reason that chair also have nothing but daughters. Well, you, you might have to get rid of her, but let's say if the chi and the chair get along, then you say, okay, well, let's bring home wife number three and see if third time is a charm. So sometimes that can happen, right? Uh, sometimes the reason may be because of various family infighting, various family politics, uh, that the qi feels like she needs an ally, in which case the qi will recommend someone from her own family, like a cousin or even a sister, uh, to become qi if they are agreeable. This way, uh, she would have more voice in the family. Uh, she would have uh, more power. Her family would have more power because now they have two people in this uh, family rather than just one. So sometimes uh, this kind of arrangement may happen because the Qi feels that she is threatened by other members of the husband's family. Uh, another reason can be that sometimes the uh, Qi, maybe due to illness uh, or due to old age, is unable to fulfill uh, various duties, including duties in the bedroom, uh, or maybe cooking, or maybe uh, working the farm, etc., uh, etc., et in which case she would encourage uh, the husband to bring home a chi. Uh, so the chi can take on those duties. Uh, so a lot of time uh, in, in the old days, the, the chi themselves was very active in telling the husband, it's time for you to get a chi, it's time for you to get another one. Uh, bring another home and uh, we'll, we'll pick one, we'll find a good one, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, also, you can re remember that uh, back in the old days, a lot of these marriages were arranged. So there's really no love or romance in the, this kind of marriage. Uh, so there wouldn't be necessarily a kind of a jealousy uh, situation going on where the chi feels that, oh, you're spending too much time with the chi, uh, or you're, you're treating the chi better than you treat me. Now, what happened if that, uh, if, if, you, if the chi feels that she is mistreated or the husband spent too much time with the chi. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the chi has so much power in the family that if the chi dares to garnish, garner more favor than the chi, then that chi usually will get sold off to someone else or outright kicked out of the family. Like the chi has that kind of power. So, uh, Jealousy was very rarely a real issue. Originally, I was going to push on through and we can talk about how uh, even uh, the offsprings of Qi, Qi and Qi enjoyed different authorities, uh, different treatment. But I think that deserves an episode on its own. So we'll cut it off today because I do have a super long Toy Thursday to take care of. Uh, we'll come back next Wednesday for part two of this video, where we'll look at how not every child was made equal in Chinese families. Thank you for checking out this video. I'll see you guys shortly again. For now, 谢谢, and 再见。